Hi, I'm Bill O'Reilly, and I am hosting the Great American Wealth Project. It's a free online presentation that will show you exactly what it takes to get wealthy in the bustling Trump economy. It's booming beyond belief with record low unemployment, record high jobs numbers, record high stock markets, and nearly 12,000 Americans becoming new millionaires every week. But I recognize that not everyone's getting ahead, and I want to change that. Joining me is an award-winning financial strategist whose work I've been following for 15 years. During our event, he'll detail his new number one stock in America, which could be the next stock to create a new set of millionaires in this country. So please be sure to join us for the Great American Wealth Project. And I should mention, you'll also discover how to get my brand new book, The United States of Trump, absolutely free. Just go to O'ReillyWealthProject.com to get started. Again, that's O'ReillyWealthProject.com. Welcome to the GSMC Financial News Podcast, the show that delves into the ups and downs of the stock market, changes in the economy, and news from the worlds of real estate and technology. From breaking news on the New York Stock Exchange, NASDAQ, or the overseas market, to updates on the bond market, if there's money to be made, we've got you covered. Hello and welcome to the GSMC Financial News Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah, and I am happy to be with you once again. We have talked in the last couple of episodes about saving for a baby and uh, the, a baby that grows into a child and a teenager and an adult. And we have talked about saving for college, whether you're a parent or a student. And now we are going to talk about saving for retirement because we all know that it's important to save for retirement. Not everybody has a good grasp on what that means. Not everybody has a retirement plan. Um, so it, it's something that you need to think about. It's something that you need to plan for. Uh, if you aren't sure where to start, of course, there are plenty of uh, options out there, tools out there for you, and we're going to try to give you some of those um, options and tools today. Um, there was a study recently done by Ramsey Solutions that... Um, it was it was a study on the state of retirement in the US and it found that nearly half of Americans aren't saving for retirement and even those who do save for retirement aren't saving enough and that of course can be a problem because as i think i mentioned in one of the earlier podcasts we are living longer and um is sometimes retiring earlier and if you don't have enough to pay for that early retirement slash longer life well, you're gonna be in a bit of hurt and you don't want to be in that situation um of course some people are thinking about it according to that same study 49 percent of americans said that saving money was one of their new year's resolutions for this year for 2020 and um so that's right up there with eating healthier and getting more exercise as the most popular resolutions so hopefully people are keeping those resolutions and and you know, doing their research and figuring out how uh, to best save money for their their budget and their life, etc. But you have to have action, of course, along with the research and the desire to do so. You know, you you can't just say you're going to eat healthier. You actually have to do it. You have to um, start buying healthier food and less processed food, and stop you know just munching on donuts in the car or whatever you might do. You know, if you if you say you're going to exercise more, you have to actually get up off the couch and doing it. So, if you say you want to save money, then you have to look into it and figure out a plan. Um. So saving for retirement may seem complicated, but it it. With the right tools, as I said, you, you can find something that will work for you. So, um, this podcast, uh, is based on a blog from, um, DaveRamsey.com and they outline three steps for 
saving for retirement. One is to set a goal for your retirement savings. Two is to invest 15% of your income into tax-advantaged accounts like a 401k or a Roth IRA. And number three is going beyond 15%. uh, Max out your 401k and other investing options. So that is the overview of this uh, plan for retirement. Let's start, amazingly enough, with number one at the beginning. Uh, That is step one, set a goal for your retirement savings. Um, If you want to retire someday and have the money to live on it, you need to see where you are today. You need to um, kind of have a goal and a dream of where you want to go in the future. And then you, of course, have to have a plan to get there. You need to ask yourself, what does your retirement look like? What do you want to do once you are retired? Do you want to travel? Do you want to take up a certain hobby? Do you have um, a spouse or a family that you have plans with? Do you have a bucket list? All of these things can affect what you might want to do after you retire. So take some time to sit down with your spouse or your partner or your family or a good friend or someone who has done this planning before and really think about what you want to do in your retirement. Um, You know, what does that look like for you? Are you sitting on a beach? Do you have a cabin in the mountains? Um, Are you hanging out with your kids and your grandkids? Have you bought a tiny house and you're traveling around the, around the country or an RV or, you know, whatever that looks like for you. Um, So when you can see those retirement dreams, then you can start figuring out what you need to do to achieve those retirement dreams. You can focus in on those goals and um, set some things. So there is actually a, uh, there are tools for figuring out what you need. Just like in the last episode, we talked about some tools that you can use to calculate how much you may or may not need to save for college. There, there are similar tools for how much you want to save for retirement. Um, there, these are calculator tools and you answer questions and put in um numbers and they give you uh, an idea at least of what to save for retirement. In fact, if you just do a quick Google search with retirement calculator, you get a ton of hits. Of course, you get the ads at the top because that's how Google works. But then uh, Nerd Wallet has a retirement calendar calculator, excuse me, Vanguard does, Bankrate.com, AARP. If you're a member of AARP, they probably have um, resources for you as well that could be helpful. Um, so let's see, there's, uh, there's, there's lists of the best retirement calculators that you can use. There's calculator.net. I mean, uh, Dave Ramsey, the, the blog that we are basing this one on, he has a retirement calculator. Everyone, it seems, has a retirement calculator. So maybe, I don't know, maybe just like when you go to the doctor and you get a second opinion, use a couple of retirement calculators. See if they give you the same answers. If they don't, I don't really know what to tell you, but um, hey, more is better, I guess. Um, let's take a break. <laughs> let's go ahead and take our first break of the podcast. And when we come back, we'll be moving on to step three of our steps for planning for your retirement. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Financial News Podcast, and I will be right back. Are you a business owner? Someone interested in the latest news that might affect your business? Then check out the GSMC Business News Podcast, a show dedicated to keeping you up to date on all things concerning business, technology, and the stock market. Get a head start on the day as we keep you updated on the latest goings on on Wall Street, money, jobs, and technology. The GSMC Business News Podcast has you covered. Welcome back to the GSMC Financial News Podcast. We are talking about saving for retirement. So you have decided what your retirement 
will look like. Ideally, if you could have the perfect retirement, what would it look like? So now it's time to put that plan into motion. Um, of course, this is Dave Ramsey, so everything begins with once you're debt-free. And of course, that makes absolute sense. You want to be debt-free and you want to have that, that three to six month plan in place. You have that emergency fund and then you can start planning for all of those other things. So then once you've done those, you can uh, start investing 15% of your gross income for retirement. And here are some ways to get started with those retirement savings. Get the 401k match. If you work for a company that has a 401k, utilize it. And, and if they match your contributions, definitely take advantage of that. Make sure you invest at least up to the match to take full advantage of that free money because you're investing a certain amount and they are putting in that same amount, uh, same amount. So it's, you know, double the money. Um, does your company offer a Roth 401k? Uh, well, that's great. As long as you've got good mutual fund options, you can invest your whole 15% there. And you may say, okay, I've heard that before. What is a Roth 401k? And um, is it better than a 401k? Well, you may be wondering, of course, how they are different. Um, access to a Roth 401k is becoming more common, actually. So you're in the majority if you have this option at work. Over half of companies who offer some type of retirement savings plan offer a Roth 401k. The bigger the company, the more likely it is you can contribute to a Roth 401k. Okay, so what is it? Uh, this is a type of retirement savings plan that allows you to make contributions after taxes have been taken out. Then you receive tax-free withdrawals when you retire. The Roth 401k was introduced in 2006 and was designed to combine features from the traditional 401k and the Roth IRA. With a Roth 401k, you can take advantage of the company match on your contributions if your employer offers one, just like a traditional 401k. Um, and the Roth component of a Roth 401k gives you the benefit of tax-free withdrawals. So um, what do they have in common? Well, they're both workplace retirement savings plans, the Roth and the regular 401k. Uh, with either type of the 401k plan, you can enjoy the convenience of having the contribution drafted right out of your paycheck so you don't have to think about it after you fill out the initial paperwork. Second, um, they both have the ability to include a company match. Nearly 80% of companies who offer um, a 401k or a similar product do offer a match on employee contributions. Of course, if you're self-employed or you don't work somewhere that has a 401k, you don't have that option. But if you work at a place that offers the match, as I said before, take it. Your employer is giving you free money. Don't forget that. <laughs> um, third, both types had the same contribution limit. In 2018, the contribution limit uh, was 18500 per year or 24500 if you're over 50. So that was a couple years ago. You'll want to double check what that is in whatever year you're, you decide to start doing this. The opportunity to invest that much every year is a huge perk of traditional um and Roth 401ks, especially when compared to the Roth IRA's contribution limit of 5500 per year. The Roth 401k includes some of the best features of a 401k, uh, like convenient contribution methods and the possibility of the company match, but um, that's where their similarities end. So how are they in fact different? The biggest difference between traditional and a Roth 401k is how the money you contribute is taxed. Um, a Roth 401k is a post-tax retirement savings account. That means your contributions have already been taxed before they enter your 401k account. On the other hand, a traditional 401k is a pre-tax savings account. So when you invest in a traditional 401k, your contributions go in before they are taxed, which makes your taxable income lower. So then that makes the difference later when you take them out, which is taxed and which is not, right? We talked about that earlier. Um, with a Roth 401k, your money goes in after tax. That means you're paying taxes now and taking home a little less in your paycheck. When you contribute to a traditional 401k, there your contribution is pre-tax. Um, so 
uh, the, they're taken, the taxes are taken off the top of your gross earnings before your paycheck is taxed. Now, withdrawals in retirement, uh, the biggest benefit of the Roth 401k is this. Because you already paid taxes on your contributions, the withdrawals you make in retirement are tax-free. That could be a big incentive, right? Any employer match in your for- Roth 401k will still be taxable in retirement, but the money you put in and its growth is all yours. No taxes will be taken out when you use that money in retirement. So in by contrast, if you have a traditional 401k, you'll have to pay taxes on the amount you withdraw based on your current tax rate at retirement. So let's say you have a million dollars in your nest egg when you retire. That's, that's pretty nice, right? Um, if you've got it invested in a Roth 401k, that's yours at least the million, if it's a million that you invested, if if it's half a million that you invested and a half a million that your employer invested, you'll have to pay taxes on what your employer uh, matched. Um, If the 1 million is in a traditional 401k, you'll pay taxes on your withdrawals in retirement. If you're in the 22% tax bracket, that would mean $220,000 of that 1 million is going to taxes, which can be a pretty hard pill to swallow when you... um, You've worked so hard to build up that retirement fund. So it goes without saying that your nest egg will last longer if you're not paying taxes on your withdrawals. And that is a great feature of the Roth 401k and a Roth IRA as well, for that matter. What about access? Um, Another slight difference between a Roth 401k and a traditional 401k is your access to that money. In a traditional 401k, you can start receiving distributions at age 59 and a half. (laughs) With a Roth 401k, you can start withdrawing money without penalty at the same age, but you must also have held the account for five years. If you're still decades away from retirement, you then, of course, don't have anything to worry about. But if you are approaching the 59 and a half year mark and thinking about starting a Roth 401k, it's important to be aware that you won't have access to that money for five years. Um, who is eligible for a Roth 401k? Uh, if your employer offers it, you are eligible. Unlike a Roth IRA, a Roth 401k has no income limits, which is pretty fantastic. Uh, so no matter how much money you earn, you can contribute to a Roth 401k. If you don't have access to a Roth 401k at work, you can still take advantage of the Roth benefits by working with your investing pro to open a Roth IRA. Just keep in mind that um, there are income limits on the IRA. So uh, you need to know about that. Lots and lots of, uh, there, 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 there's more things to know about a Roth IRA, about a 401k, I mean, see a Roth 401k or an IRA, I guess, and a traditional 401k, but that's kind of the, uh, those are the broad strokes, right? Um, so get the 401k match. Uh, that's the first thing. Open up a Roth IRA, which we just covered a little bit. If you're using a traditional 401k and you've invested up to the match, work with a financial advisor to open a Roth IRA. It's um, a retirement savings account that lets you pay taxes on the money you put into it up front similar to the 401, the Roth 401k. That means the growth in your Roth IRA and any withdrawals you make after the age of 59 and a half are tax-free. Uh, that's good. But of course, then again, there is that maximum limit that you can put in each year. And then the third thing is to go back to your 401k. Okay, what does that mean? If you've maxed out your contributions to your Roth IRA for the year and still haven't hit 15%, then bump up your 401k contributions until you do. Inside your 401k and IRA, your investments should be spread evenly between four types of growth stock mutual funds, growth and income, growth, aggressive growth, and international. Uh, so you want to have them evenly spread over those four areas. You don't want to have them all, you know, don't put your eggs in one basket. <laughs> um, yeah, there are lots and lots of funds out there to choose from. So you might want to reach out to a professional who can help you to make sense of your options and choose the best funds for your portfolio. 
All right, we're going to take that second break. And when we come back, we'll be wrapping things up with step three. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Financial News Podcast, and I'll be right back. Do you work in the world of marketing and advertising? Are you a media buyer or the owner of an agency? Have you been looking for a podcast to help stay on top of all the goings on of those worlds? The GSMC Marketing News Podcast is dedicated to keeping you up to date on all things concerning marketing and advertising. Get the latest marketing news from what major businesses have planned for the coming year to the newest trends in advertising from podcasts, digital and streaming to the old standbys of radio, television and billboards. The GSMC Marketing News Podcast has you covered whether you're a marketing agent or a business trying to expand your brand. Welcome back to the GSMC Financial News Podcast and the third step in saving for retirement. Your plan might have more steps, but these are are the three that we're outlining today. And step three is going beyond 15% to max out your 401k and other investing options. Um, Now that there's a, according to this article, nothing standing between you and Building wealth like crazy. You've, you've taken care of all of your debt. You've got your emergency fund set up, et cetera. It's time to start running up the score and put your retirement savings into high gear. And here are some options for when you're ready to invest beyond 15% of your income toward retirement. First, max out your 401k and tax favored investment options. When you have extra money to invest, the first step is to max out your 401k and or Roth IRA. If your Roth IRA is maxed out for the year, um, you can put more money into your 401k. It has a higher um, max limit than the than the IRA. You can open a taxable investment account. In most cases, you can't take money take out money from your 401k or IRA before the age of 59 and a half without facing an early withdrawal penalty. The way around that is to open a taxable investment account. You can put as much money as you want into the account and take money out whenever you want, but you will have to pay taxes on any money your account earns. Uh, You can invest in real estate. Buying a rental property can be a great way to earn passive income, um, but there are some very important guidelines to follow, like staying local and having an emergency fund set aside for, um, well, you know, emergencies for your rentals. You don't want to have something catastrophic happen to one of your rentals and not have the means to cover it. Uh, the most important thing, though, is... Um, According to this article, to pay cash for your real estate investments, no exceptions. Don't put yourself at financial risk by financing a rental property. It's a bad idea. So keep that in mind. Uh, Take advantage of your HSA. That's your health savings account. Um, With an HSA, you can save and even invest money to pay for deductibles and other medical expenses tax-free. And once you turn 65, your HSA acts like a traditional IRA, which means you can take money out for anything you'd like, but you know, you'll pay taxes on it when you do, just like a traditional IRA. How to save more for retirement in case your head's not swimming yet. So, um... Saving tip number one, cut down on your cost of living. Kind of like what we talked about in the last episode with the college student. What can you live without? What, you know, what expenses do you not need in order to save a a little bit more money? Um, One thing to think of is don't spend your raises. If you have a budget and you are comfortable within that budget and then you get a raise, put that raise into savings. Um, you, a lot of people, you know, naturally increase their lifestyle to match those raises, but you don't have to. You don't have to have that fancier car or the latest gadget or whatever it is. Um, you can use that money to contribute to your nest egg. And of course, 
always remember to stick to your monthly budget because that's going to be the foundation of any plan that you have. Uh, step Saving tip number two is to stop overspending on non-essentials. Going out for lunch with your coworkers every day or signing up for uh, the cable packages, package with all those premium channels that you never watch, not helpful. Eh, just go with streaming anyway. <laughs> it's so much easier. Um, a recent study found that the average American spends almost 1500 on non-essential items every month. That's almost 18000 a year on things like eating out, impulse purchase, purchases, magazine subscriptions, etc. Um, you know, this doesn't mean don't ever have any fun, don't ever do impulse spending, but you need to pay attention to what you're doing and see how it adds up. If you, you know, if you have not been paying attention, then take a month and see just how much you're spending on things that aren't necessarily included in your budget. Um, so, you know, what if you just cut your non-essential spending by $150 a month and put that money into a retirement savings for 15 years? Um, well, you could potentially add almost $70,000 to your retirement account just by doing that. A little can go a long way. Um, check your insurance policies. That's another thing to check in this overspending on non-essentials. When was the last time you you reviewed those insurance policies? If you're like most of us, you probably just don't. <laughs> if it's been a while, you should reach out to an independent insurance agent and see if they can find you a better deal on car insurance or homeowner's insurance uh, to see if you could be saving money and not, you know, you could be leaving money on the table by overspending. Um, kids can be expensive, so you may want to take a look at things like extracurricular activities and see if there are places that you can, um, save some money or, um, cut out some expenses, uh, you know, so there, there are ways to do that without totally limiting your kid, you know, maybe limiting them to one extracurricular per season or, um, you know, finding ways to make some compromises there. Step number three, of course, not of course, but step number three is get rid of any debts. That's of course. You just, that's the way you want to start any plan. Get rid of your debt. <laughs> um, and then move on and you can, you can plan, 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 plan. And their last tip is to stay focused on your retirement savings goal. Retirement is not an age, it's a financial number, so you need to keep that goal in mind and remember that saving for the future is a marathon, not a sprint. Um, you can, you know, you, you gotta, you gotta have that long, it's not a long con, but you know what I mean, you have to have the, the long view in mind and you want to uh, pay attention and make sure you're hitting that retirement goal. So, Let's, that, that's going to wrap it up for this episode of the GSMC Financial News Podcast. Thank you so much for joining me. If you are a fan of this podcast, don't forget to subscribe so you get the podcast as soon as they come out. And if you could um, not only subscribe, but give us a nice written or five-star review, that would be awesome. Follow us on social media. We're on Facebook and Twitter. We'd love to hear your comments and what you have done to plan for your own retirement. If there's something that you do that makes... Uh, you know, that you hadn't really thought of, but made so much sense when somebody told, uh, somebody suggested it to you. We'd love to hear those. So hit us up on social media and let us know your thoughts. Hope you're having a great week and I hope you have something really fun coming up this weekend. Talk to you next time. You've been listening to the GSMC Financial News Podcast, part of the GSMC Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcasts on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type GSMC into your favorite podcast app to find all of the shows from the GSMC Podcast Network. From movies to music, from sports to entertainment, from business news to weird news. Please subscribe to the podcast and follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you've enjoyed today's podcast.